does a local body of believers require the fivefold ministry in order to function as a local assembly or a local body of believers? This theme of the fivefold ministry or apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers being necessary for the function of an assembly today is not something that is just surfacing recently but when we look throughout history we see that various groups have claimed that the fivefold ministry or so-called fivefold ministry has been in their midst or has been necessary for the preservation of the true body or the true church of Jesus Christ. And of course one of the biggest religious institutions ever claims what is called apostolic succession. The Latin or Roman Catholic Church uh, fully believes that their apostleship goes all the way back to Peter, the first apostle. And the usual scripture that's taken for the fivefold ministry is Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 11, where it says this, And he gave some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some teachers, pastors and teachers, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of of the body of Christ. Now I want you to notice in the next verse there's a little word with four letters in it T I double L till or until till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man unto the measure of the stature or the age of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things which is the head even Christ, whom the whole body, fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplies, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, making increase of the body to the edifying of itself in love. Now, there's a tremendous lot in those other couple of verses. But the argument goes that if we do not have the fivefold ministry in a local body of believers, then that body cannot function, or function correctly, or function fully, or function properly. And even some people would say, function at all. Now the question is, in all the writings of Paul, do we find him saying that these fivefold giftings were necessary for a local assembly to have all five of these giftings. Now it's interesting to note that when we look in the book of Acts and um, I believe it's Acts chapter 13 we find that there were certain prophets and teachers in the church at Antioch now, nowhere is there made a mention of there were apostles or evangelists or pastors, but it does not say that there were apostles, any apostles there. Now, one could argue and say, well, Paul was there, was he not an apostle? Again, it's really, really interesting to discover something. As we look in the book of Acts, we find that titles were really not titles, but job descriptions were given to various 
members of the body in the early church. But these were not usually given until the people had demonstrated their gifting. When we look at Acts chapter 13, it's not until Acts chapter 14 that we find that the word apostle is used for the very first time of Paul and Barnabas. And it's only used in connection with the work which they were doing. So then it refers in the scriptures, as Dr. Luke was writing, refers to Paul and Barnabas as apostles. But they were not referred to as apostles in Acts chapter 13. Now in Acts chapter 13 we find that the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Saul and Barnabas, to the work which I have called them. So there was a separation by the Holy Ghost and then ascending forth. Now the word apostle simply means to be sent forth. One who is sent forth. But you see, this was the seal of the Spirit. This was at the direct instructions of the Holy Ghost. Paul and Barnabas being sent forth to the work which I have called them, past tense. And then they went and they did the job. And then we see that Luke is using the word apostle, meaning they had been sent forth and they had done the work. Now we realise that as we go through the book of Acts, it's progressive. And we begin to see that these job descriptions were given to various members in the body as they began to function, as they were recognised and as they were set aside to the work which God had called them. Now, nowhere do I find in the writings of the Apostle Paul when he's addressing the churches, for example, Thessalonica, uh, even, I suppose, at the beginning of the book of Ephesians, but the church of Corinth, any of the churches, he never addresses them in the beginning. He, he speaks of the saints, and he speaks of uh, bishops and deacons and so on, uh, when he's writing to them. But he never says, to the apostles in Thessalonica, or to the apostles at so-and-so, in such a place and such a church, and so on. Now surely, if there had been apostles there, and it was important to know that there were apostles in that local church or gathering, Paul would have addressed his letters to them. But we know that it refers to the apostles and elders in Jerusalem, such as James. But once we get beyond Jerusalem, when we get into the Antioch situation, we cannot find that Paul is addressing any of his letters to apostles in the churches. So was it really that important that the five-fold ministry, that each local church had to have all those five giftings operating? When we study the Word, it doesn't seem to be the case. When we study the the progression of the book of Acts, it does not seem to be the case. Paul speaks of ordaining elders in Timothy and Titus in every city. And when you go back into the book of Acts, you see that Paul went and he ordained elders in the churches. Well, why not apostles? Why did not Paul ordain apostles? So the word apostle means to be sent forth. It means to be separated by God the Father initially to a work to be done. Then it's recognised by godly people and gifted people in his church and then they are sent forth. So when we study the word of God, it's not imperative that the whole of a fivefold ministry has to operate in a local body. What is more important, according to the uh, uh, 
many times it's mentioned in scriptures, and the times it is, uh, Paul speaking, of course, to Titus, and how Paul operated when he went back to the churches throughout um, his missionary travels, and he went back and visited the people there, he ordained elders. And there's even a very good argument that this had to be also with the congregation present, that they agreed that these men had certain giftings and that they would recognize them as being gifted for elders or deacons in that local body. So then, if we do have a fivefold ministry today, I would suggest that it is not fixed locally. Because Paul certainly wasn't just fixed locally. He went around travelling. Of course, he came back to Antioch, the place where they had recognised his gifting and been sent forth from and reported back to them, to that body or church or believers. But neither therefore is someone with a prophetic gifting necessarily limited to that one local body. They may fellowship in a local body, a local assembly, but their gifting can be used widely, or more widely than that particular um, local church. And we know that's true of a person who is evangelist, who has the gifting to preach the gospel and see results of souls being saved and birthed into the kingdom of God. And someone with a teaching gift is not just limited to the local body. So this modern day idea that's going around at the moment will just bring confusion because groups of believers will say, well, we cannot be a proper church then because we haven't got, we haven't got apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor and teacher here. How can we be functioning as a, a real church? Well, neither did they in Antioch. It said there were prophets and teachers. And then the places where Paul had been and elders and deacons were then um, elected or chosen, whichever way you want to think of it, but there's no talk about apostles or even prophets in some of those churches. So we cannot lay down a hard and fast rule that would bring congregations of the Lord's people into bondage and doubting whether they should be even meeting together because they haven't even got these fivefold ministries in there as they might think they have to do. So we must needs go back and study the book of Acts and have a look at how Paul wrote to the different churches and see that it is not necessary to have the full fivefold ministry in a local body for that local body to function.